Right. Welcome, everybody, to 52 Living Ideas. Today, we are going to be discussing Ray Dalio's idea of this five-step process. Um, our group, the meetup group in New York, we went through Ray Dalio's book, The Principles, and we found it extremely useful. Um, got many, many ideas from it, like uh, radical transparency and many other ones. This is another idea that most people found extremely useful. The, so what is, what is the idea? The idea is very simple, is that in order to achieve something, we go through a cycle. We go through the cycle of setting goals, facing the problems that come up, solving the problems, making a plan which we need to do, and actually doing it, then we go on to setting up more goals. Okay. Now, that's, that's as simple as it. The, there is a beautiful diagram on the Meetup page. Uh, it kind of goes like this. So it's like you're setting up the goal, then especially if the goal is ambitious, the more ambitious the goal is, the more likely it is that you're going to face some really tough problems. And then you have to be willing to face those problems. Now, one of the key observations of Ray Dalio is that not everybody is good, equally good at all five parts of this, this cycle. And many times, it's your weaknesses in some parts of the cycle that hold you back. At the same time, there is no reason why it should hold you back. There are ways of handling it. And that's what this whole you know, understanding of the process is about. So it's a very simple concept. So I'm going to describe it very briefly. And then we're going to uh, do, I'm gonna take any questions that you have, any kind of comments that you have. Again, this series of meetups is almost like a workshop. We are taking an idea which is fairly well-defined, and we are going to see talk about how do you apply it to your life. And that's all we are focused on. So try to keep your questions on kind of the nature, you know, on, the, on making sure that you understand what it is. Um, then we are going to actually try to apply it to our lives in the breakout rooms. And after you've done that, then you can give your own takeaways about anything that you have. Okay, so that's the process. So first, I'm gonna present in very brief. I've deliberately kept this extremely brief. I write all of this up beforehand and it's on the meetup. So I'm pretty much reading what is there on the meetup. So you can read with me. Um, and then we will go into the details, okay? So this is all about use the five-step process to get what you want out of life. Step number one, set clear, ambitious goals. First, you have to pick what you're going after, your goals. Your choice of goals will determine your direction. Now, this is very important. I think most people don't set ambitious goals. Uh, if you do not set ambitious goals, then you're not going to get too far. Um, so I think setting of ambitious goals is like the start of the cycle. And if you never set ambitious goals, then you pretty much are not going anywhere. So that's the, that's the first step of setting clear and ambitious goals. The second step is identify and don't tolerate problems. As you move towards your goals, you will encounter problems. Some of those problems will bring you up against your own weaknesses. Now, if you choose a goal which is ambitious, then by its nature itself, it is beyond your current capability. That's what it means to set ambitious goals. So when you're trying to do ambitious things, you're going to face problems. If you do not face problems at all, then your goals are not ambitious enough. So problems come with the territory of trying to do something significant. And 
that's what they are. So that's, that's the context on that. Now, the question is, what do you do when you reach that? So again, let me back, go back to the first step. So you can ask yourself, okay, for each of them, you know, you can reflect on yourself and say, okay, what, how good am I at this? So um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. What I did was that I have some very good friends um, who are regulars at the meetup uh, or they are regulars at the meetup and ended up becoming very good and close friends. So what we did, and one of the principles of Ray Dalio is that of radical transparency. Um, we are social beings and we can learn a lot from each other. So what we did is that each of us actually evaluated ourselves on all of these five criteria. You know, I said, okay, I'm, or we did a scale of one to four. And we said, for each of them, we said, this is the highest, this is, you know, this is where I am on each of them. And then we, each of us, it was five of us, each of us evaluated everybody else. We know each other pretty well. And then we had a conversation about, about it. So for example, on some things which I thought I was weak, other people thought I was very strong. I said, how come? I don't think so. What, what is going on? And they gave me some examples. So for example, you know, I thought that I was not good at facing my problems. And that's something that I would realized maybe two years ago, and I've been working on it very diligently. And so I, because I'm used to working on it, I'd kind of put, I'd evaluated myself as being low on it at two. And everybody else had evaluated me at four. I said, why? And they said, just look at what you're doing. And then I looked at it and said, oh, yes, that's right. On some things where I thought I was higher, other people said, oh, you know, this, and this is kind of genuine feedback so you, that you can use. So it's not just you making the decisions, but then you're taking feedback from reality, from people that you know, in order to kind of calibrate yourself. So that's a, a side of how you use this, this kind of method. So the second one is identify and don't tolerate problems. So, so problems are natural when you're trying to do ambitious things. And then the question that you have is when you have a problem, uh, as he points out, uh, Ray Dalio points out, it's usually because you have a weakness in some area that you have that problem. Now, when you have a weakness, um, again, this is Ray Dalio's uh, you know, brilliance. He says, you can do four things when you have a weakness. Number one, you can evade the weakness, and which is what most people do for most of their weaknesses, okay? Now, suppose you say, okay, no, 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 I'm going to actually face up to my weakness. Then you have three options. Number one is you can work on improving that weakness. Number two is you can work with other people who are strong where you are weak and work as a team so that the throughput that you have is still good. And number three, you can change the structure of what you're doing so that the weakness does not hurt you as much. Now, my only insight on this one is that it is better. I used to do it in that order, but what I realized is that actually working with people who are strong where you're weak should be the first thing because it does several things for you. Firstly, if you're truly weak on something, your ability to tell how weak you are or whether you are making a progress or if you're making a progress, how significant is that progress is very poor. So for example, suppose on a scale of one to 10, I'm at one. I may be delighted that I became twice as good at two, but still, you know, I'm at two and I do not have the perspective. I do not even have the scale to figure out where I am. But if I working with somebody who's strong at that, firstly, I'm able to see the scale. Secondly, this relates to the point about learning. You can learn a lot by working with people, much more so than if you're trying to do it yourself and you're able to get the feedback to see. So I think if you, even if you just wanted to learn to make your 
weakness to be a little stronger where you're weak, it's much better to work with somebody who's really strong at that. And in that context, you can improve. And the, then you have the backup of structuring your life um, so that the weakness does not hurt you as much. All right, so that is on, you know, identify and don't tolerate your problems. Third, it's about getting to the root causes. Diagnose problems to get at root causes. If you want to reach your goals, you must be calm and analytical so that you can accurately diagnose your problems. So this is a, this is a virtue of a virtue of being rational, being objective, trying to get to the root causes, doing all the thinking that is necessary, not getting kind of emotional about the fact that you are weak, but asking the hard questions. And uh, it kind of rests on the, the step two. You're willing to face the problem, but now you have to do the hard work of figuring out what the root causes are. Number four, is designing a plan. You design a plan to get around the problem, okay, of what you need to do. It's all about planning, okay. And the last and five is execute. Do what is necessary to push through to completion. Okay, so those are the five steps. Again, you know, there are some people who are strong at some things and some people who are, who are weak at certain things. And it's always good to know where you're strong and where you're weak, because you need all these, all these steps to produce significant throughput in your life. Um, so that's the basic idea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up for questions. Again, the questions are going to be just kind of details of what it is. Um, you will have plenty of time in takeaway section uh, after the breakout rooms to talk about your, your, your th kind of overall thoughts about it. Here, we're looking for more clarification before we go into the breakout rooms to do some exercises on this. So questions, uh, you can ask your questions by typing exclamation mark in the chat or by raising your hand in Zoom. All right, anybody? Okay, um, Jim, can you, can you ask the question audio? Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I think an example could be helpful to illustrate. So it doesn't have to be your example necessarily, but just um, a scenario that walks through those steps to clarify the implications of each. Sure, sure. So let's take a couple of couple of examples. Um, so let's start with what, what would be a good example. Um, I mean, one of the examples for me was, you know, how do you bring this meetup, you know, from in person meetup to online? Okay, I wanted wanted it to be uh, successful online. What is what is in what in doing that? Um, so that was an ambitious goal of saying that, okay, I want to, I don't want to lose out on uh, the meetup. I don't want to lose the community that we have at the same time. I want to expand it. Right. So that's ambitious goal. Um, the problem was, you know, how do you reach the, you know, people. So I had to kind of figure out uh, of saying, okay, I'm a New York based uh, meetup. How do I do, do that? So what is, what, then I have to identify what, what is the root causes. The root causes is that all the people that I knew were in New York. Or they, my entire kind of meetup network, which I developed, was in New York. So I had to figure out something. And so then I had to make a plan um, of you know, what to do. So I reached out to kind of like-minded like people um, across, across, and then it took me time to, so the plan was to kind of systematically reach out to people and groups everywhere who number one already had communities number two were who are capable of producing content so i reached out to them systematically and uh then rest of it was execution so it was like you know the the difficult part 
uh, this was relatively, and there's all kinds of details involved, but that's kind of the pattern of saying, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh oh, but I have this problem. And so, okay, now what is the root cause of the problem? And say, okay, in principle, how, what is the plan for solving it? And then going ahead and doing that. So that's a very small example. So let, let me take more questions. Um, Chris, go ahead. I, yes, hi. I was just wondering, how did you work on improving your ability to face problems? Uh, and what was, the, what was the obstacle before what used to get in your way? Um, okay, that's, that's a great question. Um, what happens is that it's, you have to be really um, be willing to accept negative emotions. You can't let negative emotions stop you all everything about this and that that's a very profound point this is a point that carl jung makes for example um you in especially to face tough tough problems you have to be willing to live through uh negative emotions because you're going to get all kinds of negative feedback from your subconscious and you have to push uh, in spite of that. And that is the hardest thing. And it's like over time, it becomes easier. Um, and you don't, you, what happens is that most people are just scared, but they're more, more than that. They are scared. They're, it's like fear of fear. They're saying, oh, oh, I'm going to you know, this is going to make me feel this way bad. So I'm afraid of that. So I'm not even going to go there. Um, so basically it is courage, really. Courage to look at yourself squarely, look at what is going on squarely. That's the best answer I can, I can give. So it's going to be JB, Sanjay, and Marina next. JB, go ahead. Yeah, my question is basically, uh, where does passion come into play in this five-step process? I mean... Uh, if you're targeting for a goal that really uh, is not what you like, for instance, uh, I, I want if I if I want to be like a billionaire and uh, I'm not into uh, money at all and I'm really bored about money, making money, then this uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I think you understood the question. Like, where, where does like my feelings or my my passions, uh, what moves me, come into play in this? Because I think it's not just about uh, being uh, ambitious when it comes to the goal. It's also about uh, uh, targeting a goal that corresponds to my personality, uh, my um, what I like, uh, what I want to be, uh, and so on. Right. I mean, I, I would say. Give me just a second, okay? I think there is an echo. I'm going to uh, mute you, uh, JB. Uh, when you're speaking, you can unmute yourself. Um, so, um, I mean, everything that he is presuming is that you are really gung-ho, really um, uh, motivated to pursue that. I mean, I don't think, I mean, I don't think I or um, Ray Dalio or anybody would say, okay, you have to do this. You know, it's like you have to be a billionaire. There is no need to be a billionaire um, or anything like that. I mean, the thing is that we are talking about goals, ambitious goals. This cycle very much applies to things uh, that kind of takes your values as given. You say, okay, these are your values. Given your values, if you wanted to achieve your values, what ambitious actions, what ambitious goals do you need to set to achieve your values. So unless you are complete, you know, so you, you should be fired up about, about your ambitious goals. Um, and, and most people, you know, they are, they are afraid to pursue, uh, you know, the fullest extent of what their values are, because that might mean that they have to face some conflicts. They have to resolve some contradictions. They might have to do all kinds of other things. So this is saying, you know, first step is saying about passions is that another way of saying is follow your passions. You know, it's like, do not be afraid. Uh, follow your, you know, kind of choose the most ambitious goals, uh, pursue your values most ambitiously. You are going to run into problems as, as a result of that. So 
the passions in terms of the negative passions, that's when you will need to kind of face through that. Um, and then once you are kind of ready to do that, then it's a question of kind of, you know, doing the analytical work of finding the root causes and designing a plan. And then there is just the sheer kind of hard work and the energy, putting in the energy to execute the plan. So most of the kind of positive passions is in terms of uh, kind of the ambitious goals, I would say. The negative passions are in the second step. The anal analytical part is in the third and fourth step. And just the fear, sheer action is in, in the last step. So that would be a very rough way of putting it. So it's gonna be Sanjay and Marina. Sanjay, go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, this is a, um, like a, a fantastic distillation of um, the process now. I, I personally have followed, I think a lot of engineers and people who, who, who are in the technical areas understand this intuitively, but I, I'm going to explain it in a way that uh, maybe people realize this is not really a technical view of things. This is actually a, a real world view. And the way I, I see this is that this is how our brain works. This is how every um, mammalian brain works. It follows exactly these processes um, pretty much in order. Um, the complexity lies in that for people, for humans, step three is a little more complicated because that actually entails, the diagnosing part actually entails our thinking brain as well as our emotional brain. So we actually end up with two answers at step three. Um, and sometimes those answers conflict or one is more dominant or the other is dominant. And that causes us to behave in what seem to be unpredictable ways. But this is a very good um, uh, a distillation of, of, the pro of the best way to solve any problem. Um, and that's one of the reasons why humans have been able to survive for you know, so long, because this actually does work. Um, the question I have is that, um, and, and one thing that um, is at the end of this is repeat. So th th this, is, this is a very important part of this is, is that this is iterative. You have to repeat until you arrive at better and better solutions and, and until you're satisfied with the solution. Um, and the problem that I found for me, and, and I suspect most people have had this problem is that when you go through the iteration a second time or a third time subsequently, you may run into obstacles at different steps. So the first time you may have difficulty identifying the problem. The second time you go around, you may have difficulty identifying a plan, et cetera. So that changes each time. Um, and based on what you said, Shrikant, earlier, as far as our subconscious intervening and causing us to lose motivation or distracting us, things like that, you know, this is the real world. This is what happens in our, in our brain. Because of that, it becomes more com more difficult to follow through and really see the um, amazing results you can get by following this. So the question I have is, is um, how do you, how, how do, you know, I mean, what I, I, I can, I can, in, in the breakout, I'll, I'll give my answer to how I, I approach this, but how do you see um, us, you know, given that, that it's confusing for us to know exactly where it failed on a second or third iteration, and that's really this step three, diagnosing the problem. You're di diagnosing the problem in this process. You know, how, how do you suggest people um, get better at doing that? Sure, um, and I would love to hear your answer, you know, in the, in the takeaways, uh, your, your take on it. Uh, and all, all your comments were fantastic, so thank you very much. Um, so one of the things, uh, again, this is kind of core insight from uh, Daniel Kahneman's book, uh, combined with Ray Dalio's book. Um, one, of, one of Daniel Kahneman's conclusions, which I don't know why, but most people don't get or get out of that book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, is that your own system too is not that good at figuring out what is going on with your system one, what's wrong with your system one. Whereas somebody else's system two is much better at telling what is going on with your system one, what is wrong with your system one. So one of the fundamental things that I found is that you need to create lots of feedback mechanisms. And one of the feedback mechanisms is other people. So that's a tremendous value that trusted team members or trusted friends and family can offer you because many times you are not able to see your limitations as well. Uh, now, it does not mean that everybody, whatever everybody says is true. 
many times it's false when you know people don't necessarily know you uh, or they may be able to know only certain things better uh, than you. Um, so you have to have what Ray Dalio calls the believability score for everybody on everything. So you can say, okay, if the person is talking about planning, I'm going to take it to the blank bank. But if he's talking about emotions, no, no, no. He, has, he doesn't know anything about emotions or he doesn't know anything about dealing with people, something like that. So you need to have an idea of even, so I, one of the things is that kind of creating a feedback system for yourself um, of various kinds, feedback systems of various kinds. So one of them is other people, uh, other trusted people um, who can give you objective feedback. Uh, second is yourself of kind of trying to be as good at evaluating. Um, third is kind of using, uh, externalizing it. So writing out uh, and then reviewing it, saying this is what I expected would happen. Did it actually happen? What, so it's like you can have a perspective on yourself, but all of them are, um, are kinds of feedback system that you have to set up to provide you with the corrective uh, mechanism. Uh, next up is Marina and then Nathan. Marina, go ahead. Well, first I want to, to uh, everybody to do a tiny exercise. No, 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 Marina. You can only ask questions at this time. So we have a very... It's about very... what you said. Take a piece of paper that with something We're... written on it, put it against your nose and try to read it. It's the same thing as trying to evaluate yourself. It's an exercise that I was okay. talking about. Okay. Okay. That's first of all. Second of all, I, I don't quite understand what were you talking about when you were talking about that people are afraid to look at themselves. What is it that they're afraid of? If they're afraid to improve, them, they can't improve themselves unless they see the difficulties. That is and true. if they don't, they don't want to improve themselves, they wouldn't be on this uh, chat. Uh, I'm not talking uh, just about people who are on this chat. I'm talking about uh, people in general, uh, people who are, I mean, people who, who are here tend to be focused on trying to improve themselves. Um, but that doesn't mean that they are if equally effective in improving themselves in every possible way. I certainly am not. Um, and that is something that you have to be, um, you know, in general, people are not very good at facing up to their weaknesses. There is, you know, there are, there are all kinds of things in our brain which try to protect us from negative emotions. That's our kind of animal nature. And you have to be extremely, um, you have to be honest and you have to be willing to face, you have to have the courage to face everything wrong <laughs> in order to uh, go past it. And um, I think, I do think that people on this, um, in this discussion are better than most people they are more open to hearing what the other people are saying. They are more receptive to um, evaluating negative feedback or negative, you know, things that contradict with their worldview. They're more willing to look at it. Uh, but that's not necessarily true all across the board. But so, th so there is, I'm just saying that there is a, there is a tremendous value to, uh, to being honest uh, with yourself. Uh, Nathan, next. Hello. Uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to sort of uh, uh, get your feedback, your thought of what uh, the other guy, JB, had asked. I think he's asking a different question as well. If it's not, not financial related, if it's like a social goal, so maybe something uh, like for myself. I'm helping our lady friend with her, her charity foundation and nonprofit, which is helping abuse women. Uh, get out of the relationship and move forward in life. And so how do you measure that? Is use a smart system, S-M-A-R-T. And also I was taught by my uh, mentor as well, add I-E, so smart T goals. I-E means inspirational, emotional. What gets you out of bed in the morning? Uh, your why. Okay. And so that way you don't have to measure it with money. Okay. If that makes um, sense. Sure. Um, let uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I want to keep focused on this one. I mean, what we're doing here is that we are just taking questions, kind of clarifications of this particular method, because what we're going to do now is we're going to go into breakout rooms and we're going to discuss three questions. Okay. One, first question 
is which of these five steps are you strongest at and routinely do well? So, uh, you know, ambitious goals, uh, facing problems, diagnosing problems, designing plan, planning, and execution. Which of these five steps you're strongest at and routinely do well? And which ones are you weakest at and do not do enough of? So that's the first question. The second question is how can you minimize the impact of your weaknesses through working with others or by reducing the weakness? Uh, how can you make most of your strengths? So that's, you know, what's, you know, given that evaluation that you have, what specific to do's can you identify? And third one is how will you use this five step process to get more out of life? So these are the three questions that we are going to discuss for about 25 minutes. And then we will come back here to uh, share our takeaways. So in the takeaway section, you would be able to talk about, you know, how you approach it. What did you get from the presentation? Uh, what did you get from the breakout rooms? And then we will have a general discussion uh, after that. Okay, so I'm uh, setting up the breakout rooms now. 